Hi, good day everyone. My name is Christine Villado. So now I'm going to report what is robotics and humanity. So first, let's define what is robotics and humanity. Robotics and humanity is the study of interactions between humans and robots. Or in the other words, it is a multidisciplinary field that includes contribution from human-computer interaction, artificial intelligence, robotics, natural language understanding, design, and psychology. Human versus robots. With the development of artificial intelligence or AI, robots may also eventually act and decide like humans. Though, the Philippines has not yet reached the point of producing robots on commercial scale for household use. It still behoves us to founder the ramifications of replacing persons with machineries. Because of our limited time, let us investigate our composition and safety. We should also be aware of our surroundings because there are many people today who will do stupid things for a living regardless of the consequences so next with the help of ai or artificial intelligence decision now arise from sophisticated statistical analysis made from massive data as august of 2017 it is estimated that a million filipino bpo or business process outsourcing Workers may be affected and lost their jobs with the adoption of artificial intelligence. What is robot? A robot is an actuated mechanism programmable in two or more access with a degree of autonomy, moving within its environment to perform intended tasks. Autonomy in this context means the ability to perform intended tasks based on current state and perception without human intervention. Or, in the other words, the robot according to this definition, it includes its control system as well as the interface with the environment and the user. So now let's proceed to a service robot. Service robot is a robot that performs useful tasks for humans or equipment, excluding industrial automation application. Note, a robot may be classified according to its intended application as an industrial robot or a service robot. So, service robot helps humans by performing tasks that are dirty, dull, distant, dangerous, or repeated. They are typically self-contained and or controlled by an inbuilt control system with manual override options. So the example of service robot is care of wood. Care of wood is the product vision of a mobile robot assistant to actively support humans. Example is in their daily life in hotels healthcare institution or hospitals. The care robot is developed by the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing, Engineering, and Automation. Service robots are classified into two categories based on their use in human life. So first, personal service robot or a service robot for professional use. It is a service robot used for a non-commercial task, usually by lay persons. So these robots are main, mainly brought for self-assistance and for performing non-commercial tasks only. So the example of these are domestic servant robot, automated wheelchair, personal mobility assess robot, and pet exercising robot. Another one is professional service robot or a service robot for professional use. It is a service robot used for commercial tasks, usually operated by a properly trained operator. These robots are mainly brought for commercial use and for performing those activities which involves some dangerous tasks. 
these robots are usually operated by professionally trained operators who are solely dependent on the overall efficient functioning of these robots. Examples of these are cleaning robot for public places, de delivery robot in offices or hospitals, firefighting robot, rehabilitation robot, and surgery robot in hospitals. In this context, an operator is a person designated to start, monitor, and stop the intended operation of a robot or a robot system. Germany was one of the first countries to develop service robots. As part of the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, Service Robotics Innovation Lead Initiative, it sponsored a collaborative project called DESIRE, called Desire which was launched on October 1, 2005. So next, the earliest conception of robots can be traced around 300 BC from the Egyptians. Their water clocks used human figurines to strike the R bells. This mechanical device was built to carry out a specific physical task regularly. So from that time on, different machines were already built that displayed the same mechanism and characteristics as the robots in the present so for that for example there was a wooden pigeon that could fly a talking doll stem power robots and hydraulically operated statues that could speak and gesture next is the earliest robots as people know them were created in the early 1950s by George Devil. Unimate was his first invention from the words universal automation. So unfortunately, his attempt to sell his product to the industry did not succeed. After Unimate, several robots were also invented which were better versions of the previous ones. So ever since, people never stopped their quest in the fields of robotics. Next is roles played by robotics. Robots play different roles not only in the lives of the people but also in the society as a whole. They are primarily used to ease the workload of mankind. They were invented to make life, life are efficient and less stressful. They perform also a complicated activities which human beings are incapable of doing. They perform the simplest tasks at home so that their masters can perform the com complex ones without stressing themselves over the simple tasks. There are robots who are made for pleasure to be more specific. These types of robots perform activities to entertain people. So, in addition, there are also some robots which were made to serve as toys. They also perform different activities but they are usually child-friendly. Other one examples of robots are those which can be seen in movies. One of the reasons why robots are very famous is it's because of mov movies. A number of local and national movies were inspired by robots so this goes to show that people have developed a distinct fascination over robots so now let's proceed to the laws for robots so just like people living in the society robots also have their own set of rules and characteristics that define what a good robot is so these laws were formulated by Isaac Asimov back in the 1940s when he was thinking of the ethical consequences of robots. So, these are the following laws for robots. So, the first one is a robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. So, meaning 
a robot should not slavishly obey hum human commands because the main goal or the foremost goal of a robot should be to avoid harming humans. The second law is a robot must obey the orders given by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So because of these robots obey commands, they do the work you see them do and they do it readily and without trouble. So the third law is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So because today today's robots are expensive, you'd think designers would be naturally motivated to incorporate some form of the third law into their products. For example, even the expensive a-robot Romba detects steers that could cause a fatal fall. Surprisingly, however, many expensive commercial robots lack the mean to fully protect their owner's investment. So, let's move on to the next page. So, why ethical dilemmas faced by robotics? Because a robot may not injure a human being or cause harm to a human being through inaction. A robot must obey human commands unless such commands contradict the first law. So, in addition, a robot must protect its existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Just like any other technological advancement, Robotics also faces different problems and dilemmas. Although, the idea is to help people and make their lives a lot easier than before, it is still not immune to different ethical dilemmas and possible undesirable outcomes. One of the ethical dilemmas faced by robotics is safety. So what is safety? Safety not only the owner of the technology, but also all the people inside the house should be priority more than anything else. Another ethical dilemma faced by robotics is the emotional components. So, it is just right for the robots to be given their own set of rights should they develop the ability to feel different kinds of emotion. It can be argued that the same thing happens with animals. They may seem a little absorbed of the moment, but looking at how fast technology progresses nowadays, it is not completely impossible for robots to develop emotions. So here, the questions become, what if robots become sentient? Should they be granted robot rights? Or should they have their own set of rights to be upheld, respected, and protected by humans? Well, it is interesting to know how people would react if the time comes when robots can already feel pain and pleasure. So, in the field of robotics, there are the so-called partial autonomy and full autonomy. So, first, let's define what is partial autonomy so partial autonomy the robots relies only in a part on human input and has the ability to perform most processing stage by itself but may need user input to proceed from one stage to the next stage such as humans acceptance of a choice from among alternative decision so in short Partial autonomy includes active human-robot interactions. So, the next is full autonomy. So, when we say full autonomy, the robot relies only on itself, has a high level of intelligence, and is able to get and analyze information or generate alternatives and evaluate them and commit to a course of action without human intervention. So, in short, full autonomy excludes active human-robot interactions. So, in the other words, a robot with full autonomy can perform actions or activities even without a master telling it what should be done or what should be performed next.